Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning. I'm glad to see your faces. Praise the Lord. God is so good. The virus is dead. Amen. In the name of Jesus. God is healing the sick, casting out devils. Praise the Lord. We'll get to going and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are our God, and we love you and praise you and thank you for all you're doing for us and through us in Jesus' name. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that it gives us power. Give you praise for that to be a witness, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been doing a Bible study, Lynn and I, and we've been doing on righteousness, and, and I had a question being asked, and, and in this question that the person asked, I just, of course, go overboard. That's just, <laughs> that's just how I do it. I don't know. I just got to, I got to get a whole lot of information in front of my eyes and, you know, cause I want them to understand that the Holy Spirit is for you. And there's all kinds of scripture out there that talks about it. You know, Jesus himself, he didn't do a lot until after he got filled with the spirit. And, uh, in fact, is, uh, turn with me to Matthew 3. We'll just go there. Matthew 3, verse 16. And it says this. It says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Praise the Lord. You know, those are great words. You know, he speaks those words like that over you. You're my daughter, you're my son, and I am pleased with you. Amen. You ever thought about that, that you're pleasing to him? I'm telling you, in today's society, it's hard to think like that because of all the pressures and all the stuff that's out there. And, the, you know, you got to do this, you got to perform. But you know what? God's pleased with you. And so, and the Holy Spirit will tell you that. I'm pleased with you. Man, I love that. I mean, it's just like that just, I just let that set for a little bit and let that just touch your heart, minister to your heart. Amen. Luke 4. We're going to dig into this. Luke 4, and I want to go to verse 1. Luke 4 and verse 1. Praise the Lord. It says this, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to be bread. You know, it's interesting that he's challenging Jesus' sonship. He's going to challenge your sonship. But you know what? The Holy Spirit's going to tell you, You're my child. You're his kid. Amen? He does this. The enemy does this several times. But I love this. Jesus, he's being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan, and he's being led into the wilderness. You know, it's great to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, if Jesus had to be led by the Spirit of God, how much more should we be led by the Spirit of God? Amen? I mean, I think that's so important. You know, yeah, I'll get to it here in just a minute. i got to read on. Praise the Lord. But Jesus, the uh, devil said to him, this is verse 3, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil... Then the devil, taking him up on the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in, the moment, in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I give you, I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and to give it to whomever I wish. You know, that's interesting on that authority series that Linda and I have just been chewing on. That is something that the enemy, you know, that, that authority was given to them. I just wanted to throw that out there. Adam and Eve gave it to them. That authority. But that thing's been broken now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyway, I wanted to throw that out there. All this authority. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Man, he's just coming right back with scripture. 
Praise God. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. You know, the Satan knows Scripture too, but he misquotes it. And in their hands shall they bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. I just love Jesus. You know, he's full of the Spirit. And what he's showing you is, is that you're full of the Spirit and you can use the Holy Spirit and he'll give you words to say and co co combat the enemy. He'll renew, your, he'll renew your thinking. of A thought will come to you when the enemy's throwing stuff at you and he'll give you advice of what to speak. That's, what this, that's what's going on here. You know, the Holy Spirit's helping Jesus fight this enemy. Amen? And he'll help you. Amen? Verse 16, I love this. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and, was, and, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. This should be every person's, I mean, we should be just saying this over and over about ourselves. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You know when the spirit of God gets on you. It changes how you act. How you do things. I know I've always been filled with the Holy Spirit. I got baptized. That's the first thing my brother said. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, let's go. But what that does is it brings you power. Think about this. Here, let's go to this. I just want to do this. Matthew 26. I want to show you this. I just love this. Matthew 26 and verse 69. This is interesting. Matthew 26. Verse 69 says this, Now Peter sat outside the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I don't know what you're talking, what you're saying. And we gone out to the gateway, and another girl saw him, and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied an oath and said, I don't know the man. And a little later, he, those who stood up by, by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus who said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will never deny me three times. So he went up and out wept, wept bitterly. You look at his life before the Holy Spirit, and he's a wimp. He was a wimp. I don't mean that bad, but I'm telling you, he's a wimp before the Holy Spirit came into his life. And when he receives the Holy... Well, let's just go there, because I want to show you this. I just got excited about this. He was a wimp. Let's go to Acts 2, praise God. Acts 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's move on down a little ways. But Peter standing up, this is verse 14. But Peter standing up at the eleven raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams. And my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's go down a little bit further. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, for as many as the Lord God will call. Can you see the difference in a man that got filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you, he was a wimp. But he got filled with the Spirit of God, and I'm telling you what, it changed his life. He went out and he started declaring. He started using his authority. He started healing the sick, casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the blind. And that's what we're called to do. Amen. You're anointed with the Holy Spirit. We need to get filled up again. Amen. Man, go get some more. Go get filled. Filled again and again and again. You say, why, Doug? Because this is what you're supposed to do, what I'm supposed to do. We're supposed to be so full of him that it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It doesn't matter because you're a dead man. You've died to Christ. And now you're alive into him and that power that's in you. You know what it means to witness? To be a witness means you testify of what you've seen and what you've heard. And you go forth and you start proclaiming what he's done in your life. Amen? Be excited about that. 3,000 people got saved that first day. The same Peter that denied the Lord three times. God's using him powerfully. Acts 3, let's go there. Acts 3, get a vision of this. Acts 3, verse 1 says this. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of the prayer of the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. I'm going to make a point right here real quick. It's one thing to be working with the Holy Spirit, and it's another thing to have the Holy Spirit living in you. Big difference. The disciples did some things when Jesus declared, go out there and do this stuff. And they did that stuff. They cast out devils and all that. But it's a whole other thing when he is in living in you. And he possesses you. He's got you. And you're following his leading. You're being led of him. Amen? And that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. I love that. The raising of the dead power lives in you. Same Holy Spirit. And he hasn't changed. He's the same. Amen? Praise God. I've got to go on. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried when they had daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms for those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them attention, expecting to receive something from them. That's very important. Expect to receive something. Today, expect to receive from the Holy Spirit today for your life. Amen? Get your expector up. Today is his day for you. Amen? Expect to receive something. Praise God. Let's see what happens. Oh, I love it. So he gave them his attention. Expecting to receive something from him, then Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. You notice he doesn't pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, 
And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You know it takes faith to go like this? In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. That takes faith to lift somebody up. Amen. Because you're expecting this to happen. And as he's lifting him up, immediately strength came. Get a vision of that. See yourself in Dillon's, Walmart. Let's make some commotion out there. Praise God. Let's do some healing in the, you know, think about that. You're in Walmart. There's a person that's been in a wheelchair for 35 years, all their life. And you're walking down the aisle and God says, go pray for that person and raise them up out of that wheelchair. You're like, that's the pizza I just ate, right? No, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, saying, I want to do this through you. Can you see it? Can you use your imagination and see yourself doing that? Do you get excited? Does it stir you up a little bit? Praise God. It does me. I'm getting excited. I can't wait. I'm going to go. I may just leave right now go to Walmart. Hallelujah. Said he might get mad at me, but I better not. But let's go on. Praise the Lord. Acts 4. Acts 4. Let's go there. Acts 4, verse 5 says this. And it came to pass on the next day that the rulers and elders and scribes, as well as Ananias, the high priest, Cephas, and John, and Alexander, as many as were the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. When they had set them in the midst, they said, they asked, by what power, by what name have you done this? Then Peter, what is he? Filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to this helpless man, by what means it has been made well, let it be known to you all and to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, oh, he's preaching now, whom God raised from the dead, by this man stands before you whole. Man, can you see a difference in this man? He's a wimp. And he gets filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit possesses him, and he starts doing things that are just off the wall. He's not afraid if he's going to get killed, murdered. It doesn't matter anymore because the Holy Spirit has told him, go and do this. Get in there. You got this. Amen. That's exciting. This man has completely lost his identity of who he was, a fisherman, and now he's totally got every bit of his identity of who he is in Christ. Full of the Holy Spirit. And he's demonstrating it in power and authority. Amen. It's not going to be from great preaching. It's going to be demonstration of the power of God through you. Amen. You can do this. Because the Spirit of God lives in you. Amen. He lives in me. What a difference. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you say that they were bold? <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's look to 13. It says this. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. Uneducated and untrained. See, they're looking at this, they're looking in the natural. Don't look at the natural. Don't look at your natural abilities. That's not how God's going to use. He's going to use you supernaturally. The spirit that lives in you. Spiritually. Spirit things, amen? Not earthly, not carnal things. Man, we don't want carnal. 2 Corinthians 3, let's look at that real quick. That's going to talk about carnal. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills but the Spirit gives life. Boy, I tell you what, the Spirit is always life-giving. 
giving of life. The letter, it kills. The law, it's so... uh, Where there's always this grace and mercy. And it's like this flow towards you of this life. Giving you a life. Giving you life. That's why the Holy Spirit, when you get filled with the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, it's like a river flowing through you. It's fun, and I'm, I'm going to pick on her again. It's fun to watch Sandy pray. I'm serious. I love it. Preach, too. There's times you get to preach, and then you see the Holy Spirit come on her, and it's like, it's like what's going on with me right now. You see this flow just start coming out. That's the Holy Ghost. She'll start praying, and it's like, no, 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 and then all of a sudden, Boom! She hit it, and I mean, there's this flow, and I'm telling you what, you jump on it. Man, I mean, jump in that river, because praise God, we're going. Hey, that's what it's about. That's getting in that river and flowing with it and allowing it to take you places, and you know, you're no longer in control. You know, it's like you're just jumping in. It's like, man, I mean, you're <laughs> and it's great. Hallelujah, you know, and he's moving you wherever he wants to take you and just, I mean, wherever. You know, I think of that word that Eileen got about people flying by and she's throwing out these rafts and pulling them in. People are, I mean, they're drowning. I mean, this is the world. They're drowning in the world and she is throwing out these lifeboats and it's the word, it's her prayers and bringing them into God's kingdom. Praise God. Remember that word? I remember it. Can you get a picture of that? Are you seeing that? Is that stirring you inside? Man, I pray it is. Yeah, I love watching somebody get, I mean, they're moving in it. I love, I like getting in too, yeah. But it's fun to watch it and watch how the Spirit of God comes on them and then pretty soon, man, it's just like, Boom. My father-in-law, he would, during worship, he would do a song, 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 do a song. Finally, boom, there's the flow, and I'm telling you what, then, presence of God. He was looking, searching for it. Where are you? Where you at? Where you at? And then he found that flow, and then, boy, off we went, right into the presence of the Lord. That's what it's about. Amen? Praise the Lord. Not some carnal thing. Not something you're doing with your own strength. Not because you're educated or or trained. Sometimes people rely on those gifts. There's nothing wrong with those gifts. But I would much rather, Jeff Goss, he gave me this, and I thought, man, it was so good. It's just a great illustration. He said he was at this meeting, (laughs) and he said this guy come out, and he said he looked like a million dollars. He just, I mean, but he was just, And he played a song, and it was a great song, powerful song. And he said it was a great song, powerful song. Great song and a powerful song. And then this other guy came up, blue jeans on, kind of a ragged shirt. And then when he sang, it was an anointed song. And he said it just fell, and the people got touched by what this man was singing. The one guy was using it, nothing wrong with his own strength and own ability and all that. That's okay. But there is another when a person walks in the power and of the anointing of the Spirit of God. It's untrained. It's uneducated. But yet it's allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through you. And you're in that river and you're flowing and it's scary. It's okay. God's got it. It's not up to you. That's the great thing. I just love that. I just can't get that enough. I'm just like, it doesn't depend on me. I'm not the healer. I'm the, I'm the vessel he gets to use. That's it. I speak to the situation, command it to be healed in Jesus' name. Boom. And I believe what I say. And then I stand thanking him, praising him for that, period. 
And I continue to stand, praying in the Spirit, edifying myself, building myself up on the most holy faith. Amen? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3.11. We're going to go there real quick because this was the question that was asked. He said, I've never read where it says you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. I've seen where you've gotten filled with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3.11 says, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I want some of that fire. Fire. You know? What is that fire all about? You ever thought about that? You ever studied that? Thought about it? Seriously, have you? You know, I've seen people, I thought they were under fire. They were shouting and dancing and, you know, I've seen some of that. But that doesn't mean they're under fire. I don't know what that is. But you know what? I'm going to go find out. I'm going to get me some of that. Some fire. You know? What's that about? See, what I'd love, now I want you to think about this, that when Peter preached, it cut to the heart. I mean, they knew. That's what I want. I want that when my words come out of my mouth, it cuts to the heart. That They, they know. I mean, it's like you know. You know what I'm saying? under that kind of an anointing, under that kind of authority. And the enemy, he knows when you open your mouth and you say, in the name of Jesus, because you are filled with the Spirit of God, he knows who you are, and he knows whose you are. Amen? I want some of that fire. Amen? Acts, I want to go here. Now let's go John first. John 14, John 14, verse 16, not 16, Doug, 14, verse 16 says this, And I pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, hallelujah, whom the world cannot receive. Who can't receive it? The world can't receive it because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He will be in you. Not just with you, but in you. Big difference. Man, I'm telling you, I will not leave you as orphans and I will come to you. Praise God. Another one, John 16, verse 7. Just right down the path a little bit. Well, no, let's go here. I want to show you this because I love this. Acts 5, Acts 8. Let's go to Acts 8. I just want to go here. Acts 8. I wish I could show you some of this other. It just, I just enjoyed this. Acts 8, verse 5 says this. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. What did he preach? Preached Christ to them. And multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So what's going on? He preached Christ to him. There's miracles going on. Amen. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out, and many who were possessed and many were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Amen. Now verse 14 says, Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. These people were getting saved. There were all kinds of miracles going on, but yet they had not received the Holy Spirit. So the apostles sent two of them, go pray for them. Get them filled with the Holy Spirit. It is so important to be filled with the Spirit of God. And today, if you don't have it, you need to get it. You need to get filled today. Today is your day. Today is your day to be anointed, to preach the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. That's who we are. Amen? 
Amen. Well, I better quit. 1015. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have filled me and filled this church with your spirit, God. And I just ask that you just minister that to us and through us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your fire come down upon us, Father, in Jesus' name. I want to know more about that fire. And I give you praise for that now in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord.